this is Angela Clark with Threadbuckle Quilting and APQS Raleigh. In the last two videos, I've shown you how to set up a your font and do a design for 2021. And then in the last video, I showed you how to use borders uh, to create a, a border with that font design that we created in the center. Now I want to show you ways you can use that design we created yesterday to set up a quilt in advanced mode. Um, you could definitely use what we did yesterday as a border and just sew it directly out of the border screen. The whole idea of, of this series is to give you some creative ways to use the program that aren't necessarily as intuitive. What I want to do here is set up a quilt. I am in advanced mode in Panagraph. You'll see advanced um, is selected. And I'm going to want to put some rows onto my quilt. I set up a 72 by 72 inch quilt. You can really set it up pretty much any size that you want. My design surface yesterday was 72 inches tall by 5 inches. Um, so I'm going to want to keep my design pretty close to those numbers. So I'm going to start in by putting in about 14 rows because that should be close to 5 inches. Um, and I just did the math. I divided, you know, 5 into 72. Um, and I got 13 point something rows. So if I put in 14 rows, it's going to be a little bit higher than five inches and that's fine. I'm going to start out by showing you that wavy crosshatch design that we did yesterday. So I'm going to select all of my rows to start out with. So I'm going to come over to where it's under the select row column, go to all none so that everything is selected because remember in advanced mode, you have to choose what design is going on to every single row in here. So I'm going to hit my select pattern and I'm going to use that option to be to start out with, which was just the wavy line on the entire quilt. Um, and it's going to take a minute for this to come in. This design is very, very dense and it's going to come in very short in height. So I'm going to want to come over to where it says the size button is, and I'm going to hit the max button and I may get a um, an error that says that uh, my row with the red axis is not selected. It actually is selected in this case. Um, so I'm going to see if it wants to do it for me and it doesn't. So we're going to hit all none again and then hit max and see if it will make everything full size this time. So this is the design. Um, for that 2B that we set up. And you're going to notice that it doesn't meet up correctly. I may or may not want that look on this quilt. This is all about what you want on that quilt at this moment, right? And getting Quilt Path to give you what you want. So I'm going to zoom in so that we can see what it looks like. And it's got kind of a chevron look. Depending on what I'm quilting, that might look really cool on my quilt. In this case, I want them to at least get close to touching. The tops and the bottom of this design are curved, so they're not going to hit exactly, and I'm okay with that. A chain link fence kind of looks um, like it's been bent, and they're not always smooth, so that's kind of what this is going to look like as a chain link fence when I get done. So what I want to do now is I want to hit um, have every other line move. So I'm going to hit alternate and it's going to select every other line for me. And I can see it's done that on my screen. And then I'm going to hit the move button and I want to move, you know, it over so that they, they kind of um, get close. They're not going to touch and that's okay. Um, I can't use stagger though, because this is only one design completely across my quilt. So if I stagger it, there's 50 designs in this. I just remember that from yesterday. So it's going to be in the same situation that I'm in right now with a, but half of it on the left, is going to be pink and half of it is going to be blue. In this case, I just want to move it a little bit. So I'm going to start off on medium and I'm going to move it to the right. And medium is pretty close. Um, you're going to notice that it, it's not exact and I don't expect it to be, um, but I think I need the tip to move onto the other side of the bottom of the one on top of it. So I'm going to hit it one more time because I wanted to get closer on the top and the bottom. That was obviously too far. So let's go to small. 
and I'm going to go backwards. And that's pretty close. It's off at the, the same on the on both sides. I'm also going to do all none. And I think part of the situation is it, it may need to be sized up a little bit. It looks a lot better when I when I expand the whole thing. Um, they're not touching, but the shape right here looks the same as the shape next to it. So I, I think we're actually okay. What I want to do now is decide which rows I want to put my two, 2021 rows on. Um, so I zoomed back out. I actually hit the fit, the word fit, so that the whole quilt is showing again. And I'm going to close out of the zoom. When you close zoom, you have to hit the big scary red X in the top left corner. Um, I wish they would change that to close zoom or something so it wasn't quite so scary, but to be able to get back to the regular interface, you have to close the zoom screen. Now I want to decide which of the design or which rows I want to move. Um, and I'm just going to randomly, well, it's not going to be random. I'm going to go down two rows. I'm going to actually do all none and deselect everything, right? And then go down two rows and select that one down to like the middle row. And then down another you know, two or three rows. So they're kind of evenly spaced across my quilt is what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to hit select pattern again, and I'm going to choose my panel option two, which has the 2021 inside it. And every time I do something, it is going to take a little bit of time. And the reason is there's a lot of data here, guys. It has a lot of calculations it needs to do. So I am going to uh, tap on this third row and then tap on it again. And what I'm doing is deselecting and reselecting the row so that I don't get that message again that the row with the X's isn't selected. Oops, meant to hit max and I hit up. Okay, there we go. So now I have my 2021s, but I kind of want them to look staggered. So I'm going to um, unselect or select and then unselect all the rows again. I'm okay with the top one being in the center. I want um, this next one, the middle one, to be towards the left. So I'm going to change to jumbo because I'm about to be moving this a lot um, and go to move and start moving it to the left. And you can see the pink start showing up on the right hand side. So we know we're moving it. And I just want to hit jumbo a couple times and get it. I'm going to hit it one more time, I think. Um, and get it kind of where I want it to be. Okay. Then I'm going to come down, deselect that one, select the bottom 2021. And I want it to go to the right. So I'm going to hit jumbo a couple times on it as well. And I am paying attention to where the starts and stops are when I do this, or the tops and the bottoms of the design. Um, and I may have to go in and tweak them a little, although I think that they're close enough that it's going to be okay. So if I needed to, I could zoom way in and look and see where they are. And then if I'm okay with the design, I can quilt it this way. I can also say, Okay, I like the design, um, but I don't want to have to optimize this second row every time I do it. So if I hit quilted rows, it's going to take a minute to go over to what is known as quilt motion, you know, where the, the uh, program can actually quilt. Once again, lots of data for quilt path to actually calculate at this moment. So it could take a couple minutes to go over there and I'm okay with letting quilt path think and get where it needs to get. Once quilt motion comes up, I'm going to tap on PS placement at the bottom and I want to go to the second row. When the second row comes up, I'm going to optimize this row so I can get rid of the jump stitches on the end. I just need to hit remove all. And then I'm going to say, no, I don't want it to connect all the way across. 
and say, okay. And I'm going to save this design and I'm going to put it as um, 2000. I'm just going to add onto the end of my 2B even rows, right? Because it's the second, fourth, sixth, eighth row that I'm doing. Hit my enter key and save that. Now I want to go down and look at the two rows that said 2021 um, that we moved. And I'm doing this because um, I want you to see what is going to happen to these numbers. You can see it here. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the, the middle one that was moved because it's going to be a little worse on that one. Um, basically what happens is quilt path when you are in Panagraph, um, wants to connect things from one end to the other. I purposefully wanted my numbers to float. Panagraph is not going to let me do that, but there's another part of the program that will. So I have saved my even rows. I've saved my odd rows. I actually don't have this saved because I'm going to actually move that in another part of the program. Um, so I'm going to take you to QuiltCAD now because I specifically want my numbers to float. And the reason is I want you to be able to use this to avoid stuff on your quilts too. And you have to do it in QuiltCAD to do it. So let's go ahead. We're going to close out of here. Remember that if you want to save this for any reason, you would need to save it at the top of your screen. I'm going to do that just so that we have it. And it's going to take a minute to come up because there's a lot of data here, right? So once you see those little lines around the, um, the button, you know you've pushed it. You don't need to push it again. And we're just going to wait for it to save. Okay, and I'm just going to do 20, 21 Panto layout so that I, we know what it is and hit save. I'm also going to say because I have, you know, capture software running on my machine and have quote path going, everything is going to be saving slower than it, it normally would. So understand that when I hit quilt is row, when I hit save, everything is going to be amplified as far as the time it takes to do things um, because I'm tasking my computer very, very hard to do the capture. Okay, I've already saved the design, so I can say no, I don't wish to save it again. And I'm going to go into QuiltCAD. So QuiltCAD lets me lay out designs as well. So what I'm going to do is go up to my size real quick. Um, and I'm just going to change to one row by one row, set my height at about five inches, set my width at 72, right? Because that's the one row we were doing. And I want to bring in the um, 2021 panel option two, the one that has the 2021 in the center of it, into this row. So I'm going to make sure it's selected and hit place pattern. And then I'm going to need to max this in both directions to get it to fill the screen. Okay. And I'm going to move this. Um, before I do, you want to make sure you go to options and you want to make sure uh, this little uh, button right here to the left of defaults is selected. If it's not selected when you move it, you will not, um, it's not going to wrap your row. If you select it, this is your row wrapping. It's going to wrap your row. Okay. By default, it is not selected just so that you know. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the left because that's what we did first. Right. And then I'm going to send it to quilt. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I want you to see that it is going to send it. There is going to be some optimization here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and optimize this real quick so that we don't have to do it later. So I'm going to hit optimize and I know it looks really scary, but really 
what I needed to do is start with the number one, which is over here on the right, on the left, and I need it to count up. Okay, so I'm going to start with it where it says um, two, and I'm just going to go two, change that to a one. It's going to change to whatever number is between your plus and minus, and it's going to forward to the next number. So I can then click on my six, and it's going to change to a two. Click on the next number, it's going to change to a three. And this is everything to the farthest, the farthest to the left. So now I'm going to start working from left to right across my screen. So this one needs to be next. And I'm going to click on the nine because it needs to be five, six, seven, eight. See where I'm going with this? Nine, that 13. And then the last one I'm going to have to actually deal with is this 11. When I tap on it, it becomes 10. All of my jump stitches, with the exception of what's going on in 2021, which I want, right, is going to, they're just going to go away, right? They're there, um, but they're not going across the screen and causing me problems. Now, I want to keep the jump stitches in the middle because I want my 2021 20, to float. Um, so. I'm going to put a check in checks for breaks. I'm going to animate my stitches. And I want to, I want to remove all of the breaks until I get to the break between four and five. So I'm going to say yes between one and two, yes between two and three, yes between three and four. And then I want to start saying no. And I'm going to say no until I get to nine. So I'm going to say no, 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 no. No. And now I want to say yes again because I want that break to go away. So yes, 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 yes. And the last question that asked me if I want to connect the first and last points, I'm going to say no. Okay. So it's going to quilt this in six segments and that's fine. I can actually save this now. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go back up to our same one, which is this one, right? Because we're saving the 2021 panel option two. It doesn't want to let me do that. Okay, so we're going to have to type it in 2021. Panto option two, right? And this is left because I moved it left, right? And then I would want to do the same thing to get it to the right. Just say, okay, cancel out of this. Now I want to move this to the right. So I'm going to do the same thing and sit here and move it right. And this one's going to be easier. So um, I'm going to hit quilt when I get it where I want it to go. Well, not really. <laughs> I was hoping. Okay, so we're going to go to optimize. Same thing, I want to count up from the left to the right. So I'm going to start here on the edge. And if you can't see it, there's a zoom button at the top of it. So I can zoom way in and pull all the way over here to the right so I can see my numbers. And then I'm going to start with one and just go one, two, three, four, right? And then I'm going to go to nine and hit five. Now I want to show you what's happened though. So we are right up until this point. If it's really confusing what's going on, you can fix this in steps. I can say, okay, the right side is correct. I want to go all the way until I get to this two. So I'm going to animate my stitches and say, I want to root move my break between one and two, two and three, three and four, four and five. And then I want to say cancel. It's going to save what I did at the beginning, right? And I will be able to then deal with this part. I'm going to change the number between the plus and the minus to a number two because I want to change my seven to a two. And I'm going to count up my numbers again. So then the last thing I need to do is change my seven to a six and it's going to fix everything beyond the 2021. And I'm going to want to do my animate stitches and check for breaks. And I'm going to want to start repairing things after it, it goes through six. So I'm going to say no, 
no, no, no, no. Now it's doing six. And I'm going to say yes, 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 no, don't want to do first and last point. Okay. And then I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going to save this one. <laughs> and I'm going to see if it'll let me uh, grab the one that says left. And it is letting me do it this time. Um, and I'm just going to put the word right on it instead. Okay. Now I have all the parts I need to build this quilt. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is close out of here. And I'm going to um, come back into my main screen for QuiltCAD and change my size again. I want to change the number of blocks on my quilt to 14 down, right? Because I need 14 rows. It's going to take a minute. And here are my rows. I'm actually going to clear this real quick. So I'm going to um, select all, which I can do with this little button in the top right. And if I hit the clear, it's going to clear everything selected. Okay, so now I want to set my quilt up. And I want, I'm going to start out uh, by putting my uh, 2021 uh, um, information in. So I'm going to, I knew I did the third and then I had three three rows, three rows for the other two 2021 ones. Um, and I can't do them all together because they're all different now. So I'm going to place the first one, right? I'm gonna come down to the one I wanna to move to the left, hit select, and I need to find the one that says left on it. And I'm going to open it and place it. Then I wanna come down three more and choose the one that says right. And place it okay then I need to start alternating my rows so I'm going to come over well I can do it a couple ways but the way I'm going to do it is come over to the right hand side to where it says select and I want to do row columns and if I tap it twice it selects all of the off and then I can go over to inverse and it will select the evens. So I need to select my pattern and I want to choose even the to be even rows, right? Because that's where it's saved optimized already. Place all of those rows. And then the last thing I want to do is do all none and then select the ones that don't have anything on them. <laughs> okay, I'm just tapping on them. Select. And those are going to be the 2B. Okay, so those are going to be 2B. I'm going to place those. Okay, now I want to do all, go to size, and I want to maximum length and width. And there you go. Now, the beauty of QuiltCAD is I don't have to quilt one five inch row at a time. If I have three rows that I want to quilt at once, because let's say I'm, I'm quilting on my Millie 30, which has 20 inches of quiltable space. This is only 15 inches tall. I can quilt three of these rows at a time and I can tell Quilt Path to do that for me. So I'm going to do all none again. And I want to tap on the first three rows because that's what I want Quilt Path to quilt for me. And I'm going to hit quilt. And it's going to have three rows. If I hit optimize, I can reverse the second row just by waiting until it highlights yellow and tapping on it. And that will let me quilt the first row, jump down, quilt the second row, jump down and quilt the third row. Okay. Now I will also point out that I showed you how to do the 2021 rows, but I did not check to make sure they were aligned before I did that. So I would have wanted to align this better before I actually optimized out that row. Um, but you guys get the idea of what was going on, right? So I am going to um, optimize real quick. And then I'm going to take my jump stitches out on the side. I'm just going to tap on those blue dots to take them out because I don't want to play with my 2021 that's down here, right? And say, okay. 
and quilt path would then stitch this if I hit so well it's telling me I have to place it so I'm going to do a one point start point which is going to be up this corner right here tap it so it's placed and then I'm going to hit so and I would be setting this using a one point start point and the reason is that where this is going to end stitching right here on the bottom of the row or where that row is right here that's where I need this top left corner to align to so I can just needle down in that hole and tap it and it will um, align my next row for me okay so it's the same thing as using a top left corner if I'm doing um, quilt as rows I'm just taking the posit trim lines off so that it'll go a little quicker um, doing the one point start point in this case is going to be doing the same thing as doing um, marking the top left yellow flag on pantograph okay and I hit finished and it's going to then start let me do the next row I would just hit clear unselect the three that I did do the next three rows and hit quilt and go down the quilt using a one point start point all the way down and I could just optimize the three rows together so it quilts really quickly and gets them all done now let's talk about that swirl one where I left the void in it yesterday. So I am going to make sure that everything is selected and I'm going to clear all. And then I want to choose um, a bunch of the rows in the center of my design. And let's say I have a panel in here I want to avoid on my quilt. I would need to have measured the width of my quilt and then measured the size of my panel set something up the size of of the width of the panel in border like we talked about yesterday and then only quilt the left and right sections so if i go to select pattern i have that test one that we set up yesterday and i'm going to place that in my four rows um, and then i'm going to max them in both directions so that they fill the rows okay so we've got those and then I need to select the other rows and select curly Q which is the design I used when I set the first row up so I'm gonna hit um, place pattern so it places on all the rows and I want to max it in height okay once I have it maxed in height um, I'm gonna go over to the tools at the top right hand corner and go to repeat patterns and start adding repeats of curly Q. And what I want them to do is get them to where they look similar to the repeats that are the four, you know, the four repeat design down here. I want them to look similar in size. So at 10 repeats, they are lining up pretty well, right? They just need to join together. And I can do that by choosing by ends. Okay, so now I have a pantograph that is going to quilt completely across the rows for four rows and then quilt this section right here and jump and because i'm doing it in quilt cad and not pattern cad i can tell it um you know i want you to quilt these three rows and hit quilt um i would be optimizing well my rows may be oh I'm set to one point start point. I want to be set to one point corner in this case, right? Because the start point is not up in the top left hand corner of the design like it was on the last design. Um, on this one, it is, there's void space in that corner, right? So I need to actually set it as one point corner. And let me come over this direction too so that I can get it all on here. Oh, I still have the bottom selected. That's what's going on. Um, so I'm going to deselect these. It's what you have selected is what quilts. So I only want the top selected and then I'm going to hit quilt. Okay. And then place my design. And I would optimize it so it's sewed back and forth. I would just, you know, tap on that center one, take my two jump stitches out, and then I'm ready to sew. Right. Now I'm going to, these are actually touching, which is fine. That's going to help me align the next row. I'm going to drop my ruler down and there's a video on that on YouTube. 
um, on how to find your top left or right point. Um, so I'm going to put my ruler down against the lowest part of this design, come all the way out so I can align with where the straight up and down is, and I'm going to mark a point here. Then I'm going to use one point corner to mark every row after this. I would sew it, make sure I had my alignment mark, put the quilt up, you know, roll the quilt up onto the take up roller, then go back into quilt motion, deselect the three rows I just quilted, select the next three rows, hit quilt, and you're going to notice I have space. I would still, um, to be honest, I would want this to quilt as continuously as I could. So when I optimize this, I would actually start at the bottom and do one, two, two, three, right? Um, Cause then I could come in, I could have it do one jump stitch right here, go up, I can remove this jump stitch, come all the way over and then reverse this one, remove that jump stitch. I would leave these two jump stitches in there so it was floating but I would be avoiding quilting the center of my quilt. Okay, so the entire reason that I did this lesson was to explain to you that sometimes jump point, jump stitches are completely worth dealing with, right? Yes, I could, sh I could and I will in a future video, show you how to make that 2021 continuous. But that's not really the goal behind this video. The goal behind this video is to explain that sometimes jump stitches are completely worth your time. If it's giving you the look that you want, it's the right choice at that moment. So understanding which pro parts of the program will let you keep your jump stitches and which part are going to help you and get rid of them is important. I want to thank you again for watching my videos. Um, my name's Angela. I'm with Threadwaggle Quilting. We are Threadwaggle Quilting on YouTube and Instagram and APQS Raleigh on Facebook. Please leave comments, um, subscribe to my channel so that you get more videos. Um, and I hope you enjoy uh, quilting and that you're enjoying Quilt Pass.